Hi everyone, my name is Fredrik Vermeling. I have a research group at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. And in this short video, I will present a software that we call Greenlisted. And this is a video that's linked to a blog post I've written for Agile. So please have a look at that also if you're interested in this, this content. Um, so as mentioned, uh, this is a software that could be used to design uh, custom CRISPR screens. I will go into that more in more detail and also do that in my, in my blog post. Um, but it could also be a software that's used to just, if you want to design a, a guide RNA for one gene or a few genes in a rapid way. And this is a web-based software that's freely available for, for academic use. Uh, so, so please use it. Uh, so what is it doing then? Well, um, as you know, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 is a molecular bio, can be used as a molecular biology tool and it's now used a lot and there's a lot of different versions of it. This this presentation here, this video, as well as the Greenlist software is uh, linked to using Cas9 from S. pyogenes and it's linked to uh, using CRISPR for knocking out genes. As you know, there's now an, a lot of different alternative versions and you could use it for, for other things than to knocking things out. But to highlight that, that's what, what this software is at the moment uh, used for. And the basis for this, for CRISPR-Cas9 then, would be that you have a guide RNA, as you know, and Cas9, where guide RNA is a, um, is a RNA structure, or RNA molecule that, we, um, that is used to give specificity to the system, and Cas9 is a, is a nuclease. System. And what you use it for then is to target, um, in this context then, is to target the knockout genes. So what you would do as a researcher is to design a spacer sequence, which is traditionally 20 base pair long, and this spacer sequence would bind to your gene of interest. And this then the guide RNA, as you know, then will guide the Cas9 nuclease to the site of this gene. Um, so as a researcher, you design your spacer and you uh, deliver the guide RNA in Cas9, could be done in, which could be done in, in many different ways, into the nucleus of a cell. And there, and this complex will bind to your gene of interest if you design the, the, the spacer sequence correctly or the guide RNA correctly. And this will then result in a deformation of a double stranded break because Cas9 could be seen as a scissor that just cuts the DNA. Uh, this will be fixed in the cell by non homologous end joining, so this will be ligated. And at least three things can occur. Uh, you could get back the wild type sequence when it's just ligated. You could get insertions of, of, of nucleotides and you can get deletions of nucleotides. And what you're looking for if you want to disrupt the activity of the, of the gene, if you want to generate a knockout, is insertions and deletions, right? Uh, worth noting here is that if you if you have a uh, wild type, if it's just ligated and you get back the wild type sequence, most probably if you still have the gRNA in Cas9 in the cell, it will bind again and again and cut it uh, again until you get a change of this recognition sequence. Um, all right, um, so what is uh, Greenlisted doing then? Well, I was talking about how we use it predominantly to design custom CRISPR screens. So what would a CRISPR screen in general be then? Yeah, well, if CRISPR-Cas9 could be used to knock out one gene, of course, a CRISPR screen would be to knock out a lot of different genes at the same time and then identify cell that, that has a, an interesting behavior. Traditionally, this would be done uh, at the full genome level, which would mean you target all the genes in the cell population. Um, each cell would only be um, targeted by one, one uh, guide RNA, so only, there's potentially only one gene that's knocked out in each cell, but as a population, all genes would be knocked out. And in this genetically heterogeneous population, you would then identify cell with an interesting phenotype, separate them, for example, by sorting uh, and sequence which gRNA is found in there. By doing that, you can get a candidate list and for genes that are affecting your phenotype. A custom screen would uh, target a subset of genes instead, as for example, uh, differentially expressed genes. So this is something where you could consider a situation where you have a, a cell that's behaving in a particular way. Um, you do a, 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 a gene expression analysis and you see these genes go up, these genes go down, and you want to know, okay, which, gene, which of these genes are actually linked to the, the, the changed behavior or the part of the changed behavior that you're interested in. Um, then you can consider designing a, a custom CRISPR screen or a screen targeting just those genes that are differentially expressed. 
Uh, you can also consider designing a CRISPR screen targeting, for example, genes, subset of genes have a particular function, which could be ligases or nucleases or um, um, the transcription factors, etc. Um, you could consider a specific pathway. Maybe you're interested in, in, in a particular pathway linked to some type of, of molecule that you're interested in. Um, you can target all the components of that pathway, um, or you can consider, for, for example, unique property, properties. So, for example, genes that are in the um, cell membrane, uh, surface proteins, or, or etc. So there's there's a lot of different alternatives. Um, and <clears throat> to do these kind of things uh, could actually be pretty time consuming, um, and that's why we generated this Realistic software. Because if you want to design uh, guide RNAs targeting your thousand up and down regulated genes. And you want to have four or five guide RNAs per gene that is, is fairly time consuming. So that's where uh, Realistic uh, could really uh, accelerate your, your, your research. So how is it based on? Well, it's basically a, a sort of a database that where we have embedded um, several different full genomic libraries. So these are uh, at the moment from six different uh, constellations and I'm, I'm very grateful to these people for them for helping out with this. Um, and uh, so these are then um, basically if you choose the Doange here, you choose the Bree mouse, for example, or Brunello human. This is a, um, a database containing all guide uh, guide RNAs targeting all genes. And this is in this case, it's based on this paper here. Um, and there's there's several others of them, right? Um, please use click the detailed information here and read about them so you can see if there's any any particular things you need to think about when using them. So the, there is the reference library. So this is like a database of a lot of different guide RNAs that are have been suggested by by this publication. They've been greenlisted by this publication. As I as I that's the basis for the name. And then you want to input the genes you want to target here. So here is an I just made up a list here. You would copy them in here, and here just few choose a few of them. But of course you could take as many as you want. And basically what you're telling software now is okay. I want to uh, I want to uh, have, um, or I want to design guide RNAs that targets this gene, this gene, this gene, etc. And I want to use the guide RNAs suggested from this publication. And in this case, we know that this publication would it suggests four guide RNAs for each gene, more or less. Uh, so this, if I press run here, you would get four guide RNAs for this gene, four for that one, etc. Um, and these guide RNAs are roughly 20, oh, in, for this library, they're 20 base pair long. Uh, but of course, if you want to use those um, guide RNAs for uh, spicer sequences, you need to clone them into some kind of vector, expression vector. And to do that, you need overhangs. And that um, you can go in here and then say, I want this type of 5 prime overhang and I want this type of 3 prime overhang. So you're asking the software, design guide RNAs based on this publication against these genes and have these sequences flanking. Press run. And then in the uh, left corner, uh, oh sorry, and then it's done. And you press download result. In the left corner here, you find an output list containing a couple of different things. User input parameters is a, just a reference for you on what, what did you ask the software to do which could be good for the, in the future. Output compact here is just telling you which genes you uh, asked for and how many guide RNAs you found, which could be a good way of, of, of just quickly looking into it and see, evaluating, did everything go as you wanted. And then there's two files here. One output, which is a full file containing a lot of information, perhaps a little bit too much information, um, about the different guide, the actual guide RNAs that are suggested. And then there's an output short here. If you press that one, uh, as you know, text files could be hard to read. So I suggest that you copy them, you go to Excel and you paste them. And what you find in this file is then a long name, a suggested short name for the guide RNA, and then the guide RNA with, um, uh, so this is the guide RNA and these are the, the overhangs. So you see, you get a list here pretty rapidly. And the way you could use this then, uh, you could actually directly take this file, probably good to change the name of it, but you can take that file and just send it to a company that will synthesize these as an oligo pool. Um, and then you could just, you of course, clone it into a vector and start your experiments.
All right, uh, so that was a short video uh, explaining just a little bit of the basis of Greenlisted. Uh, there's more videos if you click here. There's a file on how to use it. There's a demo feature, etc. So thank you for, for watching.